I am Yuto Shirai. There's a super rich girl in my class. And for some reason, she brings a maid with her to class. But she's the same age as us, so it just looks like two classmates hanging out with each other. Okay, Miss Hanako. Open up. Uh, stop it! I told you I can eat by myself. My job is to take care of you, so you don't have to hold back. I'm not holding back. I'm embarrassed. The rich girl, Hanako Hotahara, is timid and can't even get her way with her servant. Well, I guess it's also that her maid, Karukuri Mishi, is pushy. Everyone knows about these two at school. What are you looking at? No, oh, nothing. And Mishi doesn't like any boys to get near Hotahara and looks at us threateningly like this with a smile on her face. If you try to talk to her, she glares at you with a smile on her face. So I've never seen Hotahara with boys before. Either way, Shirai. Huh? What? You don't think you can get close to Miss Hinako just because you sit next to her, do you? I don't think I've done anything to make you think that. You don't think I've noticed you looking at her during class? Oh, so she knew about that. It's true, I was looking at Hotahara. But that's because she looks so cute when she doesn't understand what the teacher is saying during class. But I thought I was looking at her really discreetly so that no one would notice. I can't believe she noticed that. He's a monster. Mishi was better at sports than the boys. And on top of that, she always had the highest scores on test. Just an all-around perfect human. By the way, she's nice and polite to boys that they don't try to talk to Hotahara. So she's popular with boys and girls at school. She's the polar opposite of Hotahara, who gives off an aura of being a small animal who needs protecting. Kaoruko, you don't have to put so much pressure on him. What are you talking about, Miss Hotahara? I'm talking to him with a smile on my face. How could I be pressuring him? But I think smiling at him like that is all scary and making him feel pressured. You don't think my smile is scary, do you? She's pressuring me so much to nod right now. No, I don't. Hmm, well, I guess if Shirai is fine with it, it's okay. Uh, she's so ditzy. She doesn't even notice that Amicia is forcing me to nod. And because this watchful maid is always by her side, I never got the chance to get close to Hotahara, even though I sit next to her. But one day, something happened that would change our relationship forever. G good morning, Shirai. Huh? Uh, good morning, Hotahara. Where is Imishi? Kaoruko had to skip school today to deal with some family stuff. Imishi isn't coming to school, huh? Will everything be okay? Until now, Hotahara had Imishi do almost everything for her. Imishi even took care of her food. I wondered if someone like that could really take care of themselves all day. Especially since without Imishi guarding her... Hotahara! Give me your number! Do you want to eat lunch together today? Hobbies? What are your hobbies? All the boys in class knew they couldn't ignore this chance. Everyone, you should leave it alone or... Uh, I, I have to go do something. I felt bad for Hotahara, so I tried to stop them, but it seems like I was a second too late and Hotahara left. She says she has something to do, but she's just running away. But aren't there boys in the hallway too? I felt like something was going to go wrong, so I chased after her. Then I saw... I heard! Emise is not with you today! Tell me your number! <laughs> Why? And of course, Hotahara was surrounded by boys from a different class. Everyone, just calm down! Uh, I have to go! I tried to stop them like I just had my classroom, but... Hotahara ran away again. I thought I was having deja vu. Wait, that way is... Yeah. Apparently, she was preoccupied with running away. She had forgotten about the stairs that was floating through the air. I need to make it! Uh, ouch. <laughs> Wait, it doesn't hurt. What? Uh, why? Ouch. Shirai? Did you protect me? My hand and leg. Oh, no. A uh, teacher. I need to go get a teacher. I was taken to the hospital in an ambulance. I'm so sorry you got hurt because of my daughter. I stayed overnight in the hospital because I had broken my right hand and left leg. Hotahara's father came all this way to see me. How nice of him. I know he's really busy as the CEO of a big company. Don't worry about it. It wasn't that bad. It's nice of you to say that, but you broke your hand and leg. I'm so sorry. Uh, it's more bothersome if they worry like this. Of course, I'll be paying for your hospital bills. And to repay you for saving my daughter, I'll be giving you $100,000. $100,000?! 
Oh, I'm sorry. Was that too little? No, no, no! Just think about it. It's way too much. I can't accept that much money. <laughs> but you saved my daughter's life. I should at least give you that. No, you're waking way too big a deal out of this. It's not! You can really hurt yourself falling downstairs. Especially for her. She's clumsy and bad at sports. It might not have ended with her breaking bones. But I still can't accept that much money! For a high school student like me, $100 was a lot of money. I can't even imagine what I would do with $100,000. If I accepted it, I feel like something bad would happen to me. Okay. So you say Danaka without hesitation. You really are a good person. It's not anything like that. And how do you know I helped her without hesitation? Even if I didn't see what happened, I know. If you hesitated for even a second, you couldn't have protected her. So I can deduce that you're the type of person who makes snap judgment and puts others before themselves. No, I'm really nothing like that. What, so you like Hanako? No, why would you think that? If you like Hanako, that explains why you would protect her without hesitating. Uh, no, it's nothing like that! <laughs> you don't have to deny it. No, I'm just being honest. If I really did like Hotahara, I can't even imagine what would happen to me. Imishi, who isn't even related to Hotahara, is so protective of her. I would expect her father to be even more protective. Hotahara is just the kind of person who makes you want to protect her. More than anything, I know Imishi would be out to get me. I don't want to deal with that. But anyways, Yuto. Yes? Wait, you're calling me by my first name? If your writing hand and leg are broken, you'll have a hard time getting around when you leave the hospital, right? So why don't you use Hinako as your maid? D dad No, no, she doesn't have to do that. Don't worry about it. If you won't accept the money, you have to let her at least do this for you. I think this is way too much! I get why you're worried, but I'll make sure Kotoko helps you, so it'll be fine. Himishi will be my maid too! He's gonna make that smiling devil maid take care of me too! I don't want that! Himishi is very popular with the boys, but I don't like her. And she's not the kind of person to stand by and let Hotohara take care of me. Is something wrong? No, oh, um... Actually, I live alone. My parents work overseas. So I don't think it's a good idea for two girls to come to my house. If you live alone, you need someone more than ever to take care of you. Please accept their help. It... It's no use. He won't listen. Otahara's father got his way. And now, my every day was like this. Uh, okay, open up. Um, I've told you before, but I can eat with my left hand. But... Kaoruko said it looks difficult for you, so I should help you eat. Otahara was supposed to be my maid after I left the hospital, but for some reason, she was starting to take care of me now. And what was surprising is the person who convinced her to do so was Amishi. And after I left the hospital... Cooking, cleaning, tell me what you need me to do. I'll do my best. Since I was living alone, her father decided it was better if I came to their house. So I was at their house, and Otahara looked really excited to take care of me. Miss Hanako is working so hard. <laughs> She's so cute. Oh, um, but if they're letting me live here, wouldn't it be better if the other maids took care of me instead of Hotahara? Why are you making Hotahara do it? Because she wants to, of course. But you don't ever let Hotahara do what she wants. Miss Hanako is really grateful to you for saving her. I am too. I didn't really do anything. There's not a lot of people who would think that after they broke their hand and leg. Well, it does feel good that they're so thankful. But are you really okay with this? I thought you didn't want boys to get close to Hotahara. It's true. I didn't think well of letting boys get close to Miss Hinako. A lot of people forget this, but while she is blessed to be born to such a wealthy household, her life is also full of constraints. She can't even choose who she marries. I thought that was just fiction. Well, they were able to become this wealthy because they gave up so much. That's why I don't want any boys getting close to Miss Hinako. Even if she knows she can't marry them, she might fall in love with them. If that happens, Miss Hinako will be in so much pain. I see. So if they can't get close to her, she won't get hurt, huh? It's not an absolute, but it's better than doing nothing. Also, Miss Hinako is uncomfortable around boys. So she's always thinking of Hotahara first. Now that I know the truth, maybe Amishi isn't such a bad person after all. Well, I get that, but I wonder why you're letting me into her life. There's no way Hotahara would fall in love with me. Though I guess there's no issue if I'm around her. You really disappointed me just now. 
Huh? Why? I wonder why. Why don't you ask yourself that? I don't think I said anything offensive. Well, if I have to give you a hint, I will keep Miss Hanako from falling. But once she falls, all I can do is cheer her on. Uh, I have no idea what you're talking about! I've given you plenty of hints in this conversation we just had, and you'll be seeing plenty of it. But you figure it out yourself. The world's not so easy that everyone tells you everything you want to know. And she sighed and left the room. Or so I thought. Oh, I have one more thing to tell you. Mr. Hotohara likes you a great deal. So you don't have to worry about that, I guess. Well, I'm sure if he had a problem with me, he wouldn't invite me to his home. I wish you would just hit your head real hard one time. Why would you say something that mean to me? You know what they say. You have to fix stupid. You can't wait for stupid to fix itself. And I think a good hit on your head will fix your tough-headedness. What did I say to make you so upset? Who knows? Take a long time to think about it yourself. Okay, I'll be leaving for real now. If I leave Miss Hinako alone for too long, I don't know what kind of trouble she'll get herself into. I don't know why she was so mad, but I agree with what she said. You really can't leave Hotahara alone. I think that the reason in me she never leaves Hotahara's side is because of something bad that happened a long time ago. Okay, open up. So, you're gonna feed me here too? Just give up and let me do it until you're all better. Um, okay. It's embarrassing, but I didn't hate it, so I just gave up and let her do it. She is really cute. Is it good? Yeah, it's really good. Uh, oh, okay. I actually made this myself. R really? Yeah, when you were in the hospital, I had Karuko teach me. I, um, wanted to make something for you myself. You didn't have to do that. I can't believe in me she let her hold a knife. You really are a piece of trash. What? Your gratitude is not nearly enough towards Miss Hanako. I give you zero percent. Shall I retrain you? What did I say to make you so mad? Karuko, it's okay, so calm down. Miss Hanako, you have to be strict with people like him. You have to make them understand once and for all. But I don't want that. Miss Hanako. Shirai, you've been spared. What were you planning on doing to me? Watch your back tonight. She hasn't given up? She's still planning on doing something to me. Karuko, uh, I'm sorry. I can't believe it. For me, she looks sad. This is the first time I've seen Hotahara get mad. But for some reason, she's also smiling even though she's mad. And while me, she got mad at me sometimes, I had some happy days. That was all thanks to cute Hotahara taking good care of me. It seems that while she's the kind of girl you want to protect, she's also the kind of girl who takes care of people. And I was all healed. Thanks for taking care of me until now. Now that I didn't need any more help, I was leaving the Hotahara household. It's a bummer that this is all over, but it can't be helped. After all, we live in separate worlds. Are you sure you're okay with this ending like this? Imishi? Karuko? Miss Hanako, I think this is your only chance. If you let this go now, your father might change his mind, you know? Oh. What are you talking about? So, you never ended up fixing that thick head. Miss Hinako is figuring out her answer, so please wait a little longer. Her answer? What is she planning on answering? And while I was wondering... Sh Shirai. What's up? Um, won't you stay here at our house? We have a lot of empty rooms, so you don't have to go home. But I'm all better. I can't keep having you take care of me. Miss Hinako, if you don't tell him directly, I don't think he's ever going to get it. Oh, uh, I... I... I like you! What? So, I want you to stay here. Please, go out with me! This was completely unexpected. I didn't know she liked me. I never expected her to ask me out. That she wants me to keep living with her? From when? From when you saved me falling down the stairs. You've been on my mind since then. And then, you were always so nice, and my feelings kept getting stronger. So, I... I like you. Oh, I get it now. Mishi, you could have been more direct with me. Huh? No, it's nothing. If you're okay with me, of course I want to go out with you. Uh, really? To be honest, I like you too. So I'm really happy that you asked me out. Uh, really? I'm so happy! <laughs> If you want someone, 
There's no way they would want you too, Miss Hanako. All right, let's go tell Mr. Hotohara the news. Imishi was grinning while saying this. I'm sure she was planning this all along. And what happened after that is, of course I'm not against this. They could do whatever they want. We immediately got her father's approval. It's just as Amishi said when I first got here. I already had his approval. But while he likes my personality, it's not like I have any skills. And so now that I was allowed to date Hinako, Amishi is strictly teaching me every day so I can be the next Mr. But my cute girlfriend cheers me up every day so I was able to get through that hell. Shiota, are you up for karaoke after classes are over? Not interested. Shiota, wanna grab some coffee? Name it, anything. My treat! You can go ahead and invite others. As expected of her. My name's Yamato Shikigami, a high school freshman. Here's Iona Shiota, who's always been approached by boys from our class. She's a childhood friend of mine. Iona's has always been blessed with a pretty face, and you guessed it, all the boys want to strike a conversation with her. However, Iona's popular for treating these dudes all the same being ice cold and curt. Shiota really has this vibe to her. But hey, no complaining. We're just chilling here. That ice cold attitude Iona Shiota has really gets me. And it gives me the chills. So she has that attitude associated to her name. Sort of cliche moniker that's popular around her fans, so to speak. They kind of poke fun at her cold attitude. They all know beforehand what would happen. So they approach her just for the sake of getting a hit from Yona's curt responses. You just don't know when to stop. Striking her with the same convo just to be turned down each time? Heck, you guys already knew this, so why? Dude, you're an idiot. That's all we want to get from this. Imagine a pretty cool, badass beauty and getting close to that eerie air surrounding her. That whiff of cold-blooded noble presence? Can you not feel it? Not a clue what you're on to. Dude, that won't do. The way you say it, that doesn't do justice on what makes Shiota attractive. What attractiveness? I think friendliness is more what you're aiming for. Nah, we're leaving it at that. Shiota's the real deal. She wouldn't fall for cheap flattery. Yeah, imagine her suddenly begging to be spoiled for attention. Oh, jeez. That's gotta be real adorable. Is that how it is? Yeah, I don't think the day she's gonna ask to be spoiled for attention would come at all, much less now. Dude, it's not like we're gonna act on it right away. You gotta approach someone that defensive from a distance, and slowly but surely, you'll close in on him. See, isn't it more exciting this way? You do wanna be friends with Iona, huh? Obviously! By the way, so what are your plans? Isn't she your childhood friend? Don't you like her? I don't dislike her either, but... Talking about romantic interest? Zero. Dude, such a waste. This guy even has his board on a winning position, being childhood friends with her. Well, the moment you two start dating together, you're bound to make enemies of all the boys here, just telling you. Hating me just for that? You guys are absurd. Well, like that's gonna happen in the first place. Shiota, you really came! I just want you to stop bugging me. So this means... You're willing to date me, am I right? Obviously, no. I came here to set things straight and flat out tell I'm not gonna date you. That's all. No, no, hold on! Man, getting my hopes up? I think you really wanna date me. Look, you came here after all. No, didn't I tell you that I'm here to reject you? Look here, you oughta know I'm quite popular. Dating someone like me? What else could you possibly wish for? If you're so popular, why don't you go ahead and date other girls? Nah, a good looking dude like me is better off with a real beauty like you, Shiota. We're just that perfect to match. Them's dream team good looking couple, right? I hate sleazy guys like you. Oh, and you're not as good looking as you say you are. The hell did you say? Something like that. Well then, see you. Wait up, Missy. Can't pretend we didn't hear that, huh? I ain't good looking. Are we taking this joke too far, huh? Could you please lay off? You're hurting me. I think you being cold's all sexy, but 
There's limits too, you know. You think I'm gonna forgive you just because you're cute? I just gave you my honest opinion. Is something wrong with that? Was gonna play nice with you, but a little teaching ain't so but for a girl with bad manners like you. Well, I still could forgive you if you apologize now. Using force against a girl? Wow, you really are the worst. I'll never back down against you. You got guts seeing that. Then, here's a little beating to show some sense into you. Okay, just hold on right there. What was that, loser? If you continue to creep up on Yona like now, rest assured this video is going all the way to our teach, so... I made sure that the camera was facing him to let him know I was currently filming him. Why the hell you recorded me? Give me that! As he reached out and tried to grab my phone, I immediately grabbed his arm, went behind him, and twisted his arm. Oh, that hurts! Let me go! Promise you'll never come close to Yori again. Do that, and I'll make sure this video's never coming out, too. Y yeah got it! I swear! Soon as I let him go of his arm, he made a run for it. Thanks, Yamato. Yori, couldn't you do something about that attitude towards others? I'm telling you, you're bound to meet these deranged weirdos. Surely by now you know this, right? That's why I asked you to be here. I'll be fine as long as you're here. Don't expect I'll be here all the time to save you. Look here, I can't guarantee I'll help you all the time. Because Yori's really cute, she encounters these disgusting weirdos from time to time. And not to mention, this even puts her at risk. Growing up together as childhood friends, I spent lots of time with her. Since then, there were countless times I needed to protect her. And that's why I committed myself to learning self-defense. However, this is just something I usually reserve when we're at a pitch. As much as possible, I want to avoid relying on this. Uh, these kind of guys need a flat-out rejection. Or else it won't get into their heads. That might be the case. But you don't need to get all riled up and be feisty about it. Please, it's all for your own sake, Fiona. I mean, being suddenly nice halfway through a convo makes them all smug. Like, this is the best I could do so that they'll quit bugging me. I'll make more enemies with the way you're handling things right now. Remember to go easy on them. <laughs> as long as you're on my side, I really don't mind making enemies with anybody. I'm telling you, don't just assume I'll be there for you all the time. With that, there's really no telling what this girl's thinking. There was this incident where Iona didn't make a flat-out refusal and the guy continued to pester her with his advances. All these guys only approached Iona for her looks, and so is the reason for her attitude right now. I mean, if you think about it, it'll be hard for her to completely trust a guy because of all this hullabaloo. Yamato, you done? Not yet. <laughs> Shall I teach you then? Nah, I can do it on my own. Like, I just want to start playing right now, so... Can you wait for a while? Though so Iona, she's also my game buddy. She'll even head straight to my room as soon as class is over just to play games with me. I try to finish my homework from the moment it gets handed out, but Iona's better when it comes to studying. As such, she always waits for me to finish. Hey, I'm awake here. Iona approached me and hugged me from behind. Pretty hard to concentrate if you do that. Would you please let go of me? Aw, really? If you don't know something, I'm more than willing to tutor you, so? I'm gonna solve this through my own wits. Just stop pestering me. Aw, oh, that's too close. You're slowing me down. This waiting is pretty boring. This helps me calm down, you know. Why are you this clingy whenever you're at my place? Tad too different from back at school. See? You're the only one I could show this side of me, Yamato. Well, glad you feel more comfortable with me. But isn't it better to make friends aside from me? Heck, there's nothing better than having a group of friends that can help you out if something happens. I'm content with being you as my only friend. I can't promise I'll be beside you all the time. To make matters worse, we already have enough on your hands as these weirdos do come and go even if you don't do anything. What I'm saying is just be mindful of how you usually behave. There were countless times I warned Yona about this, but she doesn't really want to change a thing about her. Setting up a solid fortress around herself is what she does at school, but is spoiled for attention when around me. I wouldn't go as far as to exaggerate things, but 
I can imagine how better she'll be if she opens up herself to other people too. Ah, uh, you're such an idiot, Amato. Did you say something? Nope. Maybe she got pissed off at the preachy warnings I told her. Yona kind of talks sourly to me, even clutching me tighter. There's no point in arguing with her, so I quietly sat there and just let her be. What's this? Uh, something wrong, Yamato? It's nothing. Don't mind me. It's pretty common to see Yonona's shoe locker with letters inside. But this one was mine. My first time seeing this happen. This might be from the guy who confessed to Yona yesterday. He might be pissed, so sent this to me as payback. Maybe I'll confirm things later. Yona, could you go ahead and me for today? Why? Just have some errands to attend to. Would it be bad if I tag along with you? It's my own errand. You don't have to tag along. So you want me to go home? All alone? Should be fine as long as you head straight back home. Or are you feeling anxious without me? N not at all. I'll do just fine without you. For some reason, we've been commuting to and from school together till now. Both of us just happen to be headed towards the same direction, that's why we go home together. As time passed, being with each other sort of became a normal, everyday thing. Yona had a lot of encounters which led into trouble while we were strolling past streets. Up until now, she didn't encounter such problems while at school. I dare say Yona won't get in trouble just because she's commuting alone. Well then, be careful on your way back home. Uh Yona wanted to follow me, but I couldn't just let her tag along. The letter that was in my shoe locker this morning contained a memo wherein someone wanted to meet me. Inside contained details resembling that of a love letter. But of course, there's a chance that someone is luring me into a trap. So I sent her home just in case things get pretty dicey. You came! So it was you? You wrote this letter? There I found her. A girl who I had no recollection of being acquainted with whatsoever. Maybe they did this in hopes of letting my guard down and it is all part of their trap, I thought. I glanced, surveyed the area, but there wasn't anyone but her. I'm Miku Osami, currently in first year, Class E. Um, I'll just ask you once again, but will you go out with me? Uh, sorry to say this, but I still don't know a thing about you. <laughs> you saved me back then, Shikigami. Don't you remember this? About what? There were guys hitting on me while walking down the street, and you came in and drove them away from me. Oh, that did certainly happen. A guy was pestering this girl who was a complete stranger to me. Seeing that reminded me of Iona suffering the same fate, so I butted in, even though I didn't know her. After twisting the guy's arm for a bit, he ran away, so luckily I didn't end up badly. I didn't want to be thanked or anything, so after wrapping things up, I immediately went on my merry way. So that time, huh? Didn't know you also studied here. Me too. That's why I was shocked to find out we're in the same school. After that, I wanted to discover more about you. I've been waiting for a chance to meet you since then. I've always thought that you were dating Shiota because you're always with her. But I mean, you two are just childhood friends, right? So, will you go out with me? Yeah, I'm not dating Shiota, but honestly, I'm not interested in being a relationship or anything like that. Also, even if you ask me on a date, yeah, it's just not my thing. <sighs> Do you hate me? No, not that I hate you or anything. It's even my first time meeting you up close. So, being your boyfriend, you're asking too much of me. In that case, can we start as friends? I hope you'll get to know more of me then. Sure, we can be friends. I'm so happy. Thanks. After that, I went home together with Usami. Uh, who's the girl, Yamato? Yona? Shouldn't you be home by now? After exiting the campus, for some reason, Yona was right there in front of the gates. And why should you care? I thought you had something to attend to. Turns out you really meant this, huh? You wanted to go home with her? How oh, sorry for being such a hassle. What the heck are you saying? Somehow, Yona looks like she's drawing out all the wrong conclusions from this. I went ahead and explained how all this started. So, what are your plans after this? I'ma just head straight for home. Why? You were thinking of dating her. If I wasn't here, pretty sure you'd do that, right? Nope, not at all. So, um, why are you suddenly barging into our conversation? 
Uh, so look here, does it really matter to you, Shiota? If I start dating Shikigami, this doesn't probably concern you. I kind of agree with her. That doesn't mean that I was now okay with dating her, but Yona didn't really have any business butting into our conversation. Yep, it does matter. I'm his childhood friend, that's why. It's my obligation to keep Yamato away from being played by rare girls, so... That's a new one. Well, I was the only one who'd protect her at times. In fact, there's never been any situation that warranted the opposite case, which is her protecting me. Wow! Huh, you're kinda rude! I would never do something to trick Shikigami. Never ever! And it's because I genuinely like Shikigami. Still, I can't approve of you dating him. Huh, maybe you too do love Shikigami? Is that right, Shiota? What? You're missing the point here. Just say it. You don't want him being snatched away from you. So now you're trying to ruin my relationship with him, correct? Shut up. Yamato, we're going home. Hey, Yona. Our conversation ended on a sudden note. Then, Yona grabbed my hand and abruptly walked out from the scene. What are you tailing us? He promised to walk together home with me. I'll be joining your stroll part of the way. Usami grabbed my other hand and walked together alongside us. Why are you holding hands? Because you're doing the same too. Duh! We're childhood friends. Yeah, no. We walking together while holding hands? Far from normal. Forget that. What the hell is this situation? You guys are sort of fighting over me. We're definitely not fighting over you or anything. I'm just protecting you. Yona's acting strange from the get-go. It was my first time seeing her act like this. I want to date Shikigami. Look, if you keep lying to yourself, I might as well go ahead and snatch him away. I'm telling you, you're getting me all wrong. Finally, it occurred to me. Yona did hold something towards me. However, I was never keen on seeing Yona in a romantic way. Plus, I've never really heard her say that out loud. I kept my mouth zipped, keeping myself from saying anything unnecessary. Okay, my house is this way, so I'll see you again tomorrow, Shikigami. Uh, sure. Finally free from being sandwiched in between Iona and Usami. With this, I was able to take a breather. Yamato, honestly, you're not gonna date her. Yep. Well, not at this moment. I'm not really interested in dating somebody or something similar with that. Not at this moment? You mean there's a possibility you'd still date her? Can't say anything yet. Never really thought about love and all that stuff, so... Can't imagine me being in one. Maybe being with Iona all this time did influence me. This thought of having or pursuing a special someone never occurred to me. Meeting the existence of a friend, a lover... They're all not that different for me. However, that might not be the case for them. Their action towards me probably had a special meaning behind it. That's why even though if they ask me to start dating on the spot, I can't just hastily commit to something without giving it much consideration. Everyone says I'm cold-hearted, but... Yamato, guess you're pretty cold too, huh? What do you mean by that? Mm. Don't stress about it. So anyhow, that segment about love life kind of fizzled out on the way, so I've decided not to pursue that combo any longer. Yona, I can't move properly. You're gonna play with a handicap. No need for that. Yona sat between my legs and continued playing the game. You could say we're on par in terms of gaming skills. However, she insisted to continue playing while I was in this unfair, uncomfy posture. I've always thought she was only this, tactile, well, clingy, because it was sort of automatic to her to keep a certain distance from others. Now it feels different knowing it might be a sign of her harboring those special feelings towards me. I had zero idea how to deal with it. That's it for today. I wanted Iona to leave me alone, so we kept it up today's session earlier than usual, and I laid down on my bed. I wanted her to go back home ASAP to give me some time to ponder on what might happen from here on out. I'ma lay down for a while too. Gonna lay down beside me without showing any hesitation. Then can you do me a favor and sleep at your own house? I can't get a proper rest with you doing this. Yamato, 
What's with the sudden cold response? Just stating what's obvious here. Fire, I can feel you distancing away from me. It's not like the normal you, Yamato. We've known each other since childhood, meaning Iona too keeps a close eye on me. Pretending things were normal didn't work, as she likely saw right through what I was thinking. I don't know how many times I should tell you this, but Iona, do you do me a favor and stop being spoiled around me? You want to talk and be comfortable around other people too, you know? Not changing my mind. I'll be fine with just you, Yamato. I'm saying this because I'm worried about you. Tell me, what's going to happen if I can't be there beside you and you desperately needed help? Would there be someone to help you besides me? You have someone else you can rely on? Right now, you'll have no choice but to keep all those worries to yourself. All alone, Iona. You want to leave me? You don't want to be around me? If you mean just casually hanging out with you, no problem with that. But I can't be together with you all my life. You really should try to open up yourself to others and find someone else you can trust. Yamato, it might bother some to you. I kind of disturbed your day with Usami earlier too. Is that why you're mad at me? This has nothing to do with that. And no, I don't find you annoying whatsoever. I like you, Yamato. I want to be with you forever. So please, don't leave me. You mean as a couple? Yes. Yona was all red. Her face suddenly had that serious look. I really wanted to brush off what she told earlier, but as her message was all loud and clear, I decided to give her my honest answer. I'm a complete stranger when it comes to love. I don't think I could be that someone you're hoping me to be. Do you hate me, Yamato? No, I don't. Then, can I be your girlfriend? I'm not settling for anyone but you, Yamato. Right now, Iona, you're literally having tunnel vision. Pretty sure there would be someone more than happy to keep you safe, Yona. Please, just don't go deciding others may be hard to trust. You're getting it all wrong. The reason I don't want to meet somebody else is because I liked you for a very long time, Yamato. It does not have anything to do with me trusting other people. Yona hugged me tightly than ever, as if hinting she doesn't want to let go of me. Yona, you really like me that much? You're such a dummy! Even though we were together for a long time, can you notice this? Because you seem to be indifferent and cold to everybody. So I thought you weren't into relationships or that kind of stuff. But I acted normal around you. Thought you just treated me as family. You're one to talk. You're honestly cold towards me. Really? Totally. My case was different from Iona, as there wasn't anyone who told me dead straight I was cold. I mean... Those things just never occur to me. You know what? I wish you could also turn to people around you, not just me. Hey, the world isn't full of bad people, I'm telling you. Judging others too from the start just wouldn't do. First get to know them better and then see how things go. Are you really against the idea of us dating? As soon as we start dating, you'd start losing interest in other people too, right? Just want what's best for you, Iona. Then promise me. Say you'll take responsibility for me if anything happens. Sir, you'll be by my side to protect me. Do we really need that? Look, I even protected you all these times, isn't it? Well, then, not just as childhood friends, but as lovers. Treat me as your bestest and promise not to cheat on me. And I'll swear to change my attitude towards the people around me. And so being lovers is just my option, then. Frankly, I'm not interested in dating, but... If it means you're going to hold a seamless convo with others, then I'll spoil you this time. <laughs> That's kind of a shoddy response. Anyways, I'll take your word for it. Promise me we'll do things a normal couple does, okay? <laughs> Not sure what normal couples do, but I hope you'll go easy on me. Keep your promise, and I'll do my best to do what you want to do. My priority was to see Iona opening her heart towards other people. Trusting others is not an easy thing to do. Without opening up to them first, building a relationship based on trust would be hard. In other words, not utterly rejecting them at the start, but maintaining an open mind towards them. I guess you can now let go of me. Couples usually cling together, so... After going out of the house this morning, Yona just wouldn't let go of my hand. 
Back then, she usually did such things only at home, but now she was all okay showing this spoiled, affectionate side of her even outdoors. We'd get glances from everyone as she kept on clinging onto me all the way to school. Uh, Shiota? You're holding Shigigami's hand? Nearing towards our classroom, our classmates had exacerbated looks on their faces upon seeing us. Duh, we're a couple, that's why. What? The classroom was in a stir. Once well known for her cold treatment towards people, Yona was the last one you'd think to make things official in front of a crowd. Hey, mind your words, Yona. I gave Yona a stern, cold warning. Shikigami! You said we would be hands off, Shiota! Yeah, things happened. Heck, what happened? Stop harassing Yamato for this. I mean, I liked it for a very long time. I had no attention to date anyone other than him. But still, I want friends. Could we be friends? What? That's not how you make friends. I was supposed to keep this side of my bargain with Yona. However, this? I was dismayed hearing Yona utter those words. Heck, even those who stood frozen hearing that. That's not something you blurt out to someone who hasn't grasped the current situation. I don't want to be friends with someone who aren't okay with our relationship. After hearing her following sentences, I kind of had an idea of what she was on. Yona was sort of drawing the line here. Those stingy to share such affection aren't worthy of her trust. Her way of handling things might be a bit rough, but seeing someone who never had any good interactions surrounding boys, this was good enough of a compromise if we're talking about her. Oh uh, yeah, so we really want to be friends with you and um... Anyhow, we'll give that thing about Shikigami a rest. Sure, if you're okay with that, I want to be friends with you. M me too! You know, after all that's said and done, all seems to be in the right place. Sure, we want to be friends with you. If you really want to be friends, Shiota, I'd be glad to. <laughs> Thank you. Yona was all smile. Shiota smiled! Man, that's cute! I thought for sure there was a quarrel brewing, but somehow these parties came to a settlement. There was really no need to butt in. Oh, so, Shikigami, looks like you and Shioto are now dating, huh? Yeah, a lot of things happened. Could you stop sticking your nose between us? Yamato's mine already. Yona clung to my arm tightly and gave Usami a sort of intimidated glare. I knew it, so you two weren't simply childhood friends. Really? I was dumped even from the beginning. And I guess that's it. I have nothing more to say. And I probably can't be your girlfriend, but I do remember getting an okay as friends. So we could still be together, as friends, right? As friends. Yamato, you planning on cheating? Is this considered cheating? You should be more aware that you're my boyfriend. Oh, this means I still have a chance with you, right? You wish. Yamato! Uh, Yamato won't just come clean. Don't worry, I'll keep a reasonable distance with Yamato. Still, if it comes to a point that you two may seemingly break up, that, I can't promise I won't do anything. Oh, surely that won't happen. Okay then, well, wishes. Huh, Yamato, are you still gonna hang out with Usami? Hanging out with her as friends? Probably should be fine, I guess. Yamato, ugh, you're just so clueless. About what? Huh? After that, Iona had her eyes on me, watching me closely. Just talking with the other girls at school would meant to me a glare from her. She sort of wanted monopoly over me. I guess being fed up with things comes with being a couple. Also, Iona's different attitude towards others kind of mellowed down. She's still popular, where most who'd approach her for a combo being boys. That tendency for an indifferent cold response is not entirely gone, but at least she's way more talkative nowadays. If she's really dedicated to making more meaningful encounters, yes, I'm willing to accept things as they are right now, too. I'm Eisuke Mishima, a 23-year-old truck driver. During my shift, I was in a car accident that broke both of my legs. Ah, I'll have to take some time off for a while. I guess I should consider myself lucky to have survived. Huh? Usuke? Why is Rina here? Rina Takabayashi. She went to the same high school as me. 
She's also my ex. When we were dating, I loved her so much that I thought I would marry her in the future. But then she suddenly dumped me, and we fell out. And I never saw her again after high school. Can't you tell just by looking? I'm a nurse here at this hospital. Is that so? Come to think of it, she did say she wanted to become a nurse back in high school. What happened to you? I was driving for work and got into an accident. I'm a truck driver now. Ugh, oh, but that means you weren't paying attention. No, they bumped into me. Is that so? Well then, I'm sorry to hear that. Maybe it's karma from five years ago. Huh? What did you just say? Nothing. It's my job, so I'll do it right. But don't bother me too much. I hate you, Eske! We haven't seen each other in a while, and that's what you say? I already know that. You must truly despise me since you suddenly broke up with me. Well, it's been five years now, so there's no point in dwelling in the past. Huh. As long as you're on the same page. Hurry and get better so you can leave. Yeah, yeah. I don't intend to stay here long either, since I need to get back to work. Is that so? Then that's fine. My hospitalization thus began. Usuke, I mean, Mr. Mishima. It's almost time for examination, so please take a seat in the wheelchair. Oh, alright. Called my name, then immediately went into work mode. I suppose if Rina's going to be professional, I should be as well, and speak formally. I'm going to move you, okay? Do you feel any pain in your legs? No, I'm fine. Wow, despite your hatred for me, you're able to still be professional. Well, Rina has always been a serious person. Uh, of course I am. Why is there at stake here? Huh? Did I say it out loud? No, I can just tell exactly what you're thinking. I see. Man, how nostalgic. You could read me back then as well. If you knew so much, why did you dump me out of the blue? Perhaps you lost interest in me because you knew everything I was thinking? Don't make that face. You're the one who betrayed me first. Uh, just now, what did you say? Nothing. Come now, Mr. Mishima. Let's go to your checkup. Oh, okay. Rina and the other nurses took good care of me, and after a month, I was gradually getting better. <sighs> I'm being discharged from the hospital tomorrow. I don't know if I'll ever see Rina again. I wish I could have at least asked her about her high school days. Yusuke? You are released tomorrow, right? Oh, Rina, you're here. You're not in your uniform. I just got off night shift, and I'm on my way home. Oh, so that's why you're not in work mode. It's been a while since I've seen Rina in her casual clothes. Still cute as always. Since I'm off tomorrow, I wanted to see you today and ask you some questions. Uh, really? I wanted to speak to you too. Oh, really? Then the feeling is mutual. I'll push your wheelchair, so let's talk in the garden instead. Ah, thanks. Rina then pushed my wheelchair silently to the garden, outside the hospital. So what did you want to talk about, Rina? Hey, you said you wanted to talk to me too, so you go first. Fine, then I'll go first. Why did you suddenly dump me? <laughs> Wait, that's it? That's all you wanted to say? What do you mean, that's it? I was really shocked, you know. I've been wondering why you dumped me all this time. Obviously, it's because it was your fault. I was hoping you apologized to me. Have you forgotten what you did? Huh? But I didn't do anything wrong. We were on good terms until the day before. Then you suddenly broke up with me. What are you talking about? You cheated on me. Huh? I cheated? I would never do that. I thought the same thing, but I saw it with my own eyes. No way I'd do anything with another girl. Forget it. There's no point in talking about it now. Hey, wait! Hear me out! I would have forgiven you if you had apologized. But since you've forgotten everything, there's nothing else to discuss. Goodbye, Eske. I don't think I'll see you again. But... but... I sat there alone for a while, stunned, unable to comprehend what had happened. In the end, I returned to the hospital room alone and abandoned. The next day... No matter how many times I think about it, I still have no idea. I rarely talk to girls other than Rina in high school, let alone cheated on her. I guess I'll have to ask Rina again. 
but she said she's off today, so I guess I can't check anymore. Yoo-hoo, I'm here. Oh, sis! Why do you look so gloomy? Are you sure you're well enough to leave the hospital today? Naoka Nakamori. She has a sharp tongue, but she's a dependable older sister who takes good care of me. She's only two years older than me, but she's already married with kids. She's busy taking care of her kids, yet she still came to see me, so I better cheer up. Oh, sorry, sorry. I was just thinking. You sure? All right, then. Abu! Nao wants to cheer you up, too. Oh, thanks, Nao. I'll push your wheelchair for you, so can you hold Nao? Are you sure it's all right for me to carry her? Yeah, you're probably fine. Ada! Aw, oh, she's so friendly. Yeah, I guess she's not very shy. You're surprisingly fond of children, aren't you? What do you mean by surprising? I like them just fine. Then, why don't you get married soon? You say that, but I don't have anyone to marry. You're not a bad-looking guy. I'm surprised you're not popular. Shut up! Don't make me face the harsh reality! Sorry, sorry. Do you want me to introduce you to some of my friends? No thanks. Your friends are all... Gyaru. Dude, that was like years ago. They all have serious jobs now. Oh right. I only saw your friends back when we were students. Yeah, I guess that's true. What's your type anyway? Well, someone kind and fun to be with, I guess. That's too vague. I'm not sure who to introduce you to. I don't know what to tell you. Then how about looks? Someone pretty with long hair and big eyes that... My type is exactly Rena, isn't it? I'm starting to feel sad after saying that. So combining everything you just said, someone who's kind, fun to be around, has long hair, big eyes, and is cute. No girl like that would ever choose you. You need to be more realistic. You're the one who asked. Sorry, sorry. How long have you been single? About five years. Five years ago? So high school. You're still heartbroken from back then? No, it's not like that. Then by type, you must be referring to that girl, right? You're strangely perceptive, aren't you, sis? What are you talking about? You're just easy to read. Speaking of which, is that ex-girlfriend the one you gave birthday present to? What? I helped you pick out a present when you were in high school, remember? Oh, now that I think about it, five years ago... You're looking through my magazines without my permission. It's fine, right? It was just lying there. It's fine, but did it say anything you'd be interested in? Um, yeah, sort of. Hmm, a gift feature, huh? Are you getting it for your girlfriend? It's none of your business. It's none of my business, but your lack of taste worries me. Oh, is it that bad? I mean, there are some cute ones, but the ones you chose are lame. Hey, you're being too harsh. I mean, a present can be anything as long as it comes from the heart, right? That's for the receiver to decide. The giver should give something that will make the recipient as happy as possible. Makes sense. Exactly. I guess I have no choice but to help you. I'm going to the department store. I don't wanna! It's embarrassing to go out with you! You should swallow your pride in two if you want to make her happy. Ugh, you're right. In the end, my sister took me around to accessory stores and cosmetic stores. After we went around, I bought Rena a rather expensive necklace, but she broke up with me the next day, so I didn't get a chance to give it to her. Something like that did happen. Come to think of it, I was dumped the day after I bought the present. Which means, Rena might have seen me shopping with my sister! She never met my sister, so she probably assumed I was cheating on her! Man, if I remembered this yesterday, I could have explained! <sighs> well, it's too late now. You don't look so good. Are you sure you're okay? Oh yeah, don't worry about it. Shall we get going then? Yeah, let's go. Yosuke? I'll hear you out one last time! Is that your wife and kid? She's the one you cheated on me with, isn't she? You're such a jerk! No! She's my sister! Huh? What kind of lame excuse is that? I'm his older sister, Naoka Nakamori. And this is my daughter now. Yeah! Really? Yes, here's proof. Aww! He's so cute! What are you showing her? 
It's a family photo of when you were little. Hey, stop it! You're embarrassing me! Wait, she's really your sister? Yeah! You didn't get a chance to meet her back then! So, you weren't cheating on me then? Ah, so you really did see me shopping with her. I just realized why you misunderstood. She was helping me buy a birthday present for you. Oh man, so that's what's happened. I thought I was helping you out. Didn't mean to create a misunderstanding. No, it was my fault for assuming. Really? Well, I'll let you in on a little secret. He just told me he still has feelings for you. Hey, that's uncalled for. Well, I guess me and now will get out of your way then. Bye. Ah! Yeah, I'd appreciate it if you did. I thank my sister for quickly resolving the misunderstanding, but I wish she hadn't said anything unnecessary. I have a car, so I'll take you home. Let's talk about it when we get home, okay? Uh-huh. We both went back to my place. Both of us red in the face. Car shook a lot. Is your leg okay? Yeah, it hurts a little bit, but I'm totally fine. I see. That's good to hear. It's hard to start, but I should be the one to lead the conversation. Um... I'm sorry. If I had trusted you more, there wouldn't be any misunderstanding. I really liked you at the time, so your betrayal enraged me even more. No, I was careless. I should have explained myself as soon as I realized it was a misunderstanding. Besides, it's been five years, so let's not argue about who's at fault anymore. Okay, thank you. Then, can we talk about our future? Our future? Yes, your sister said earlier that you haven't moved on. Is that true? Yeah, I pretended I didn't care, but I was still hung up on you. I see. So was I. I was still heartbroken and I was really happy to see you again. I was so shocked when I thought you had a wife. That's why I still love you, Yusuke. Rina. I love you too, Rina. I won't let you down this time. So I'd like to start over with you. This time, I'll be extra careful not to misunderstand. Yeah, I'll be careful too. This time, I'll be more honest and open about how much I adore you. So be prepared. Uh, yes, I will as well. So you better watch out too. <laughs> Even though we broke up once due to a misunderstanding, I'm sure we'll be able to get along this time. My head hurts. The woman who's sighing now is Nana, who I met on a dating app. I'm Shinji Kato, I just turned 25 this year, but I was matched to this woman 10 years older than me. The app claims to only match you with people no more than 3 years apart from you. I can't help but wonder how it turned out like this. Probably a bug, she said it to hide her age, and maybe it's not a great app anyway. I only found out when I had some doubts about her age and asked her directly. Uh, what do we do now? There's nothing to do. We should just forget this. You don't want to date someone a whole decade older, right? No, I actually don't mind. I mean, she's so pretty. If she didn't tell me her age, I would think she was in her late 20s. Even if she's 10 years older, I would love to date someone as beautiful as her. Hmm? Uh, if you have no problems with it, I want to see where this takes us. Even though I'm an old woman 10 years older than you? Please, don't worry about that. You look so young you could pass for someone in her 20s. You don't have to be so polite. I'm not, though. But why are you on this app? I mean, you don't look like you'd be lacking for options. Um... I've focused so single-mindedly on work until now, I never had the chance to meet guys. Oh, really? Oh no, I think I've hit a sore spot. It's my first time seeing such a mature woman get so dejected. She must find me annoying. I'm just an emotionless work machine. Why would you say that? <laughs> I heard it from my parents and some other people. What a harsh family. Well, it's not like I really want to get married, but... But? My parents told me to just do it already. I'm an only child. If they say there's no other way, then there's no other way. Ah, uh, sounds like they say stuff like that quite often, huh? Why are you on the app? 
for me? I mean, my friend found his girlfriend on this app, so I thought it could happen for me too. It's embarrassing to admit, but I've never had a girlfriend before. <laughs> I've got ten years on you, and I've never had a boyfriend. What does that make me? Oh no, I didn't mean to make you sad. You didn't have to. I'm sorry. After that, all I could do was apologize. Now then, we have a movie after this, right? That's right, but are you okay with an anime movie? Of course. I've been watching lots of anime lately. If I didn't have a hobby like this, I'd have nothing to talk about with guys after all. She's putting in so much effort for this. We went straight to the movie theater after leaving, but... That looks like the entrance. Uh, hold on, Nana? As soon as we went in, she headed towards the theater before we even bought the tickets. And of course... May I have your ticket, miss? She was stopped dead in her tracks by the theater staff. Huh? Uh, what ticket? Nana, we have to get the tickets before we can go in. R really? We don't pay when we come out? Uh, no, we don't. We have to buy them now at the ticket machine over there. that huh so then why did you walk in here you talk too much it, it was just a joke but you don't even seem like the type to make that kind of joke for now let's just buy the tickets don't ignore me it's embarrassing i mean i just thought it'd be more embarrassing if i made a big deal out of it you look so nice on the outside but you're surprisingly merciless huh not at all. Anyway, I'm gonna buy them now. Oh, how much do you need? No need. The man should pay for things like this. Uh... It's fine. I'm older than you. Huh? Don't worry about it. I have lots of money. That's not my issue, though. Wait, that's a premium credit card? Uh, thank you. In that case, I'll pay for the drinks and popcorn. It's okay. I'll treat you. No, I, I mean, isn't that unfair to you? I said it's fine. Let yourself be spoiled by your elder. Uh, then, in your words, I guess I'll let myself be spoiled. Even though she seemed so cool up until now, suddenly seeing that doting smile... As a result, I found myself a reluctant recipient of her generosity. Hmm? When we sat down in the theater, Nana started fidgeting. Considering what happened earlier, this is likely her first time in the movie theater. How cute. Mm, that was fun, right? When we finished the movie, Nana looked extremely satisfied. It was adorable how her eyes sparkled while watching. If you just consider her age, she's pretty mature, but I think she's surprisingly cute for her age. Where are we going next? Hmm, right. What do you usually do for fun? Me? I don't have friends to hang out with, so I usually just stay at home and watch anime or play games on my days off. <gasps> That's not something to be ashamed of! But, I mean, didn't you say you have a lot of friends? Sorry, by friends, I was actually just referring to my co-workers. I might have exaggerated a little bit, I apologize. J jeez don't get so down over every single thing. It's not like I blame you. I barely have any friends too. Instead of spending time by ourselves, let's go somewhere else together. Wait, Nana? In arcade? Unexpectedly, the place that she brought me to was an arcade. I was very surprised, and it didn't seem like the kind of place that she would have been to before. You said you play games on your days off, so I thought you'd like it if we came here. Just for me, you came all this way? It's not that strange, is it? Isn't it normal to be considerate of your date's interests? Thank you. I didn't need to be thanked. I mean, I'm glad you thought of me. Now, why don't we just go on in? Uh... Nana, what's wrong? Now that I think about it, an arcade is that kind of place, isn't it? Somewhere where delinquent kids gather. Nana? What do we do if they start pestering us? 
They might even make us strip naked. No way! What era do you think we're living in right now? An arcade is definitely not a hangout spot for delinquents. Really? Yep. Nowadays, it's a perfectly normal space that even women and children visit. Seriously, don't scare me like that. No one was scaring you, though. What do you want to do? Right. What kind of games do you play? Uh... I'm sorry. Even though I said that earlier, I actually don't really go to arcades. What? Why? If you don't have any friends to go with, it's more trouble than it's worth. I usually play games at home, so I've never played any of the games here. W why don't we try some then? Hmm? A drum game? I have that at home too. The game that Nana's pointing out has been super popular since I was a kid. There's a whole series that's being made. And I bought the one that they put out that can be played at home. Alright, let's do it. <sighs> I said I'd pay for everything. This much is fine, isn't it? It's not that much anyway. Despite Nana's complaints, I put in enough money for two people. Let's play on easy mode. You don't seem like you've done this before. Nope. Let's go straight for the extreme hell mode. <gasps> she knows about extreme hell mode? Extreme hell mode is a hidden difficulty setting in the game, and it's the hardest mode to play. The display normally shows only up to hell mode, but the extreme hell mode can be accessed with a secret command. The fact that she knows this, could she be a gaming veteran? Have you played this game before? Not at all. So how? I saw it on TV. Something like this should be easy. Huh? Something like extreme hell mode? Wouldn't the normal reaction be to think that it's impossible? Despite my doubts, I didn't want to burst her bubble, so we chose extreme hell mode. And then... 100 streak! 200 streak! 300 streak! Nana, supposedly a beginner, scored a record number of combos on extreme hell mode. A monster? I'm standing next to a monster! Full combo achieved! <sighs> that was easier than I thought. Uh, is it really your first time playing this game? Yep. Really, I'm good at music. I've been playing a bunch of different instruments since I was a child. I see. Even so, there's no way a beginner should have been able to get a full combo. After that, I was treated to even more shows of her gaming expertise. <sighs> It's completely dark already? Nana led the way in trying lots of different games. Before we knew it, it was dark outside. But I think that it was a day well spent. Sorry, I can't eat dinner with you. No worries, it can't be helped. You have to go to your office, right? Yeah, there's some urgent business to take care of. But I had fun today. Thank you. No sweat, I had fun too. Uh... Huh? Is something wrong? It's nothing. Just, can I text you later? Uh, of course you can. <laughs> okay, then. Well, then, I'm gonna head out. Having said that, she turned on her heels and rushed off. She said that she had urgent business, so she must be in a hurry. Is it safe to say that that date went well? I did wonder how it had turned out in the beginning, but she actually wants to keep in touch. Maybe it'd be fine to just follow her lead on this. That night, Nana texted me later and we exchanged a few messages. She texted me the next night as well. Just like this, we became closer little by little. Then, one day, I should try asking her out again. Really feeling like we were getting along well, I had this thought while in my company's morning meeting. Seems like there's going to be some kind of important announcement, but anyway, it'd have nothing to do with a lowly employee like me. It was nothing for me to worry about. At least, that's what I thought. A warm greeting to all employees. My name is Nana Hamai. I'll be taking over at this company as your new CEO. N Nana? Huh? What is this? How did Nana become the CEO? I lost my ability to think straight. Upon asking my boss after the meeting, I found out that Nana is apparently the only heiress to the major conglomerate that owns our company. She was in charge of another company, but it seems like they're increasing the number of companies under her management. <sighs> Seriously? 
There's no way I'm on the same level as the heiress of a major conglomerate. Apparently, I was just having a dream that would never come true. I don't know why she's using something like a dating app, but for now, I need to end this. Thinking that, I sent her a farewell message during my lunch break, and then... What do you mean you're ending this? Somehow, Nana rushed into my house. I had never even told her my address. How are you here? Because I looked it up? No, I mean it's a coincidence. You looked up where I live? I just followed my intuition and got it right. I don't think there's many people that would believe something like that. More importantly, what's that about wanting to stop seeing me? Did I do something to make you angry? It's not that, I... Uh, I mean, someone like me isn't a good fit for you. You're someone who's going to be inheriting a major conglomerate. Meaning, you're just being realistic about the situation? Yeah, that's right. Listen here. I don't care about things like money and status. That's why I hid the fact that I was rich, and used the dating app to meet people. And yet you're gonna dump me just because you found out I'm rich? You're not being dumped. I'm the one withdrawing from the playing field. That doesn't make a difference to me! Right. I really like you. I was thinking about marrying you after dating for a while. But now you suddenly want to put distance between us? Can you blame me for not thinking that I'm being dumped? But I have no money and I'm just an ordinary company employee. And I already told you that has nothing to do with anything. And rather than thinking about that, why don't you try to become a man worthy of me? Show me that kind of resolve, at least. Oh, that's true. I think you're right. <laughs> it's fine if you get it. Right, thank you. So does that mean we're officially together? Huh? I mean, isn't that what happened? If I'm reading it correctly, wasn't that a confession? Since we know each other's feelings, I don't see a problem with officially dating. About that, I was actually planning to become a man deserving of you before making it official. You're still saying that? But now I just want to work as hard as I can while we date, and I can get married whenever I become a man worthy of you. Oh. Well, that's fine then. Thank you. So, now? Uh, right. Now it's time for you to meet my father. Huh? Just when I thought that we'd come to an agreement about being together, I somehow ended up being brought to her house. And then... Alright, well then, I'll have you learn management under my mentorship. It'll take some time before you become a man befitting of my Nana, but she isn't getting any younger. Father? It's never too early to get married, I'll teach you everything personally. Therefore, in order to become a man worthy of his daughter, I underwent rigorous training under Nana's father. Two years later, my abilities were recognized, and I was able to give her the wedding of her dreams. To be honest, I still don't feel that I'm quite there yet, but Nana insisted that it was fine since we already had her father's approval. Therefore, I continued improving and striving to be someone worthy of her. I'm doing my best to make her the happiest woman in the world. I, Takashi Fujisaki, was nervous. I just can't get used to this moment. It was because it was my first day working at a new workplace. I quit my last job because of the low salary. But this company has a high salary, so of course I was excited, but also very nervous. Alright, let's do this. And I set forth into my second workplace. Oh, Mr. Fujisaki. As I entered the building and headed towards the office, I ran into someone I had seen before. She had beautiful black hair and was wearing a business suit. She looked to be around my age, and she was gorgeous. She had beautiful purple hair and was wearing a business suit. She looked to be around my age, and she was gorgeous. I think... she's my new boss, right? I had met her at my interview. Her name is Asuka Sagimori. She was the boss at my new company. Good morning. I, I'm looking forward to working with you. <laughs> I'm looking forward to working with you too. Please, you don't have to be so nervous. 
I think I told you at the interview, but we are a relaxed, friendly company. If I could relax, I wouldn't have such a hard time. If you can tell me that, you'll be just fine. Please ask Saya to help you from here on out. Is Miss Saya my superior? Yes, she is. I see. So I see. This company's atmosphere is friendly enough that people call each other by their first names. Oh, are you the new guy? I heard a voice from behind me. She had brown hair down to her waist and a cute face. Unlike the boss, she was dressed casually. But I feel like she kind of looks like the boss. I felt something was off, but I could tell the basic level of attractiveness at the office was high. I'm glad you're here, Saya. I want you to show Mr. Fujisaki around. Do I have to? She said, do I have to? I guess I'll have to cut your pay. Mr. Fujisaki, come with me! I'm sorry, but hearing this conversation right in front of me feels really unfair. All right, Mr. Fujisaki. I'll take you to where your office is. The office is two steps away, but okay. This way. I see. With employees like her, is this company really okay? What? Once I stepped foot in the office, I was so shocked, I felt like I had been hit by a bolt of lightning, because the office only had female employees. Oh, <laughs> it is surprising, isn't it? We only have female employees. It's like I have my own harem. Oh, I see we have a funny guy. Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Saya Sagimori. Huh? Sagimori? Hmm... It's a last name I've heard somewhere before. Hmm. I'm actually the boss's little sister. <laughs> Miss Sagimori, shall I rub your shoulders? Wow, your attitude's done a complete 180. Dirtbag vibes are just emanating from this guy. I learned from my last job that new employees usually have to kiss ass. That isn't wrong, but it's still weird. And today was a completely new experience. Bye, Mr. Fujisaki. We're heading out. Oh, yes. Have a good rest of your day. I was in the same field of work as my last job, but everything was new. I was a little worried working with only women, but everyone was so nice, I was enjoying work for the first time in a long time. Good work today, Mr. Fujisaki. Thank you, Miss Sagimori. How was your first day? It's the same type of work as my last job, so I'm handling it well. Really? I knew you could do it! Then let's go out for drinks! What? But I still have work left! The word overtime doesn't exist here. If it's work you can finish tomorrow, then do it tomorrow! Oh my gosh, this place is amazing! Oh, you hadn't gone home yet? While I was getting excited about the new job, my boss suddenly appeared behind me. I was about to go drinking with the new guy! I didn't say I would go! I have to seem like I'm working hard at least in front of the boss. You're not coming? Aw, oh, that's too bad. Employees who go out drinking make our company seem like it's in good standing. And we are more likely to get promoted, but... Let's go! Let's leave right now! I knew it. This person really is a dirtbag. Good. If it's alright with you, can I join? Of course! Alright! I get to drink while being surrounded by gorgeous women! Woohoo! All right, then let's go to our usual place. That's what was decided. All right, then, to Mr. Fujisaki joining our company. Cheers! 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 We went to a restaurant close to the station. If they say their usual is this old place, maybe the boss doesn't have expensive tastes. But anyways, I'm just happy to be drinking with these gorgeous women. Ah, cold beer after work is just the best! Hey, Sayo, don't have bad manners. Oh, don't be so hard-headed. Beer goes hand-in-hand hand with working! I've made a new discovery. Miss Sagimori looks young, but she acts like an old man. Very relatable. So, Miss Sagimori, you're... Yes? Yes? Oh, yeah. You have the same last name as the boss. This is annoying. We're sisters! So I've heard. Yeah, we're sisters! I remember, because you told me before. But people say we're not at all alike. Really? I think you look alike. How so? Well, you're both beautiful. Oh. <laughs> I 
didn't know you were a womanizer, Mr. Fujisaki. Womanizer? I'm surprised. I thought you'd be used to hearing that. They're both very pretty and cute. If they went to a meetup or a bar, they'd get hit on right away. I hear it quite a bit as a pleasantry. But Saya works at a woman-only workplace, so... Really? <laughs> hey, stop! That's annoying! <laughs> Your face is so annoying! <gasps> Anyways, I'm glad you joined our company, Mr. Fujisaki. Said the boss as she took a drink of beer. To be honest, I was a little worried, since it was the first time I'd hired a man. I was surprised too when I joined, because it was like a picturesque harem. You were excited. Hey, now, Senpai, don't say anything. I think someone like you will get along with everyone right away. You think so? I only saw you a little bit today, but everyone wasn't as tense as I thought they would be. And the vibe was good. I felt like the main reason was because everyone was nice, but it's probably better not to be humble. Well, I will admit that you're easy to talk to. Are you holding a grudge about what just happened? Yes. Oh no, this senpai is so cute. I will admit that I'm glad that the person who joined is friendly. I can talk to you even though I'm shy. Huh? But you acted like you had no problem talking until now. I rather felt like you were very used to talking to people. I was nervous. Saya is really shy around men. Mr. Fujisaki, you're amazing. That compliment doesn't make me very happy. Everyone is so nice to me, it's been really easy working. <laughs> Thank you. Yay! We are drinking tonight! This great senpai will pay for you today! You're so cool, Miss Sagimori! A new workplace, nice superiors. I had my doubts, but I'm really happy I joined this company. Somehow, we ended up drinking for two hours and the reliable, cute senpai got hammered. Oh, sorry about this, Mr. Fujisaki. Please, don't worry about it. Apparently, their house was within walking distance. I wanted to go home in a taxi, but the reliable senpai said she gets car sick. As expected of a reliable senpai. We ended up drinking a lot, huh, Miss Sugimori? It wasn't an all-you-can-drink, but I ended up drinking ten beers. I was surprised that she invited me again tomorrow by saying, Let's drink tomorrow, too. Saya loves to drink. Didn't you drink about the same amount, boss? What is up with these sisters? But the reason I drank so much was, I think, because I had so much fun. Really? I'm happy if that's true. But because I was carrying her sister, I couldn't see her face. I'm honored. It may seem like it, but I don't drink in front of other people. I usually don't go drinking with the boss on my first day, either. Hmm, that's not what I meant, though. Oh my, how cute! With my position, I get pretty tired always worrying about how I will appear to others. But today, talking to you, I thought, it's easy talking with you. It's relaxing. I'm honored to have a boss of a company say that to me. Do you mean that? Maybe. Of course I don't mean it. It's just my way of becoming closer to you. Surely it was by chance. But it was perfect for me and I had fun. If you say something like that, you might get misunderstood, you know? Even now, she has an appealing look and is financially set. Mm, you're right. Most men do look at us that way. But you don't. That made me pretty happy, you know? But I do understand what you're saying. But my guard is up! Well, that makes sense. <laughs> Let's go drinking again, Mr. Fujisaki. What about her guard? It seems to be full of holes! The next day... Mr. Fujisaki, let's go drinking! With no regrets about last night, there stood Senpai. I can't believe it. You drank so much yesterday. I have almost no memory of last night, so I don't remember! What a great way to get hammered. Okay. I'll go if you want me to carry you home again. Come on! What are you talking about? Miss Sugimori slapped my shoulder as she said that. There's no way that'll happen. And there's no way, right? Oh. 
And so, we went to the restaurant again, and finally headed home late into the night. On my back, same as yesterday, was the reliable senpai one step from throwing up. Does this senpai not know the words, dead weight? I can hear you. I can't even fathom some romantic situation occurring. It's not my fault! When it's with you, I'm just so relaxed. I feel like it's the same way at the office too, though. It may seem that way, but I am nervous. It is work. After all, I am my sister's little sister. Huh? If I'm not cheerful, people will make fun of me. I see. People will think she got her job out of nepotism. I guess she's scared that people would accuse her of that if she was a bad worker. Miss Sagimori must be scared of that too. Everyone's nice. You don't have to worry about that. You think so? At least I'm really grateful that you're there. After all, she's being friendly to a new employee like me. Besides drinking too much, she's a reliable senpai. It's things like that. What did you say? Nothing. Miss Sagimori, your keys, please. Here. It was the second time I had come to a woman's apartment, and I took the keys from Miss Sagimori. Yesterday, the boss was with us, so I only had to bring her to the door. But unfortunately, it's just me today, so I have to help her inside. Can you go in? Take me inside! What an annoying senpai! Even as an adult, I get nervous going into a woman's room. Or so I thought, but I was fine. Make sure you at least take off your coat. Okay... It's probably because senpai is hammered and sloppy. It's too bad. She's usually cute and reliable. Senpai, do you want some water? Yeah. I want the water that's in the fridge. Miss Sagimori, there's only alcohol in here. Okay, then give me the water with the least amount of alcohol in it. Miss Sagimori, that's still gin. Is tap water not okay? I knew if I gave her the water in the fridge, things would get worse. So I gave her some tap water in a cup. All right, here you go. Thank you. Seeing her take little sips of water made her look cute, like a little animal. Mr. Fujisaki, you're nice. It's nothing. It is something. Otherwise, you wouldn't take care of me like this. I think it's the obvious thing to do. I can't just leave her here like this. I don't know how I would feel about a person who would just leave their senpai like this. Okay, then. Quit drinking. At least... Seven days a week, I know. You don't know at all. <laughs> I'm joking. Even I'm not that stupid. Miss Sagimori smiled with her cheeks still red. When I'm with you, I'm relaxed. So that's why I probably say those things. That's what the boss said too yesterday. But I don't have a relaxing effect, you know? My sister and I do have the same tastes. Oh, but this isn't good. That means my sister and I are going to quabble. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. Mr. Fujisaki, our guard is up more than you think, you know? Because, not to brag, but my sister and I are pretty. You say that, but you're very forward. I wonder why. It's only the second day since I've met you. Probably because you're drunk. Is that how I look? Even if I was dumb, yes. Please, take care of yourself more. Miss Sagimori, you'll end up with someone weird if someone as beautiful as you says things like that. I think saying something like that is proof that you're a weird guy. That's what Miss Sagimori said while puffing her cheeks. Well, it's no use to be forward, so I'll stop for today. Yes, please do. I'm so nervous being pursued by a beautiful girl. It's late. Why don't you stay over? I thought you said you would stop for today. Apparently, the senpais at my new workplace are very daring. I mean, I'm happy, but I don't think I can take it if she keeps inviting me like this. That's what I thought as senpai looked at me with a teasing smile, and I smiled awkwardly. And somehow, one month had passed. Excuse me, about this proposal. Let me see. Yes, it looks good. Thank you. I had gotten used to the workplace, and while I still have things to learn, I'm living every day to the fullest. But you really are amazing, Mr. Fujisaki. Really? Really? You've only been here a month, but you're already doing a great job. 
and I can entrust physical tasks to you. You're really helping me out. Another senpai close by agreed. To be told such compliments to my face is embarrassing. As expected of Miss Sugimori's favorite. What are you saying? It's not like I'm her favorite. Mr. Fujisaki! I have something I want to teach you, so once you're done with that, come to the conference room. See? I can't disagree. If she smiles at me that brightly, I'll run out of reasons to disagree. What are you talking about? We were talking about how you're shy around men, but you like Mr. Fujisaki. Saya, are you maybe going after Mr. Fujisaki? Of course! Don't say that! Oh, wow. You're so popular. I don't know how to respond to that. It's not like she asked me out, and it's only been one month. I wish she wouldn't say stuff like that in front of me. Mr. Fujisaki, I have a meeting with a client after this. Would you like to join me? Really? It's a chance to meet new people, and if it's with the boss, I can probably learn a lot. I feel grateful for the invitation. How rare for you, sister. <laughs> what are you talking about? The boss's request comes first. But afterwards, let's do my thing. Oh, okay. All right then, let's go, Mr. Fujisaki. It's been one month since I joined. At first, since it was a female workplace, I had my doubts. But everyone at work is nice, and the work is fun. My life is so much better than before. But they're both so forward all the time. I haven't even done anything. That's what I thought as I looked at both of their faces. Good morning, Mr. Hayamizu! Morning! See you, Mr. Hayamizu. I think I'll be late for practice today. Alright, take care. Hey, Ryuta! The day's only started, and I see you're already ogling. You still asleep or something? I'm not ogling. Oh, come on! Let loose! Get excited! I'll go all you want! High school girls are all around. This is a girl's dorm. Not to mention we have a bath area. Most guys would kill to be in your place. Oh, enough of that crab first thing in the morning. You're such a bother. What did you just call me? Oh, Ryuta, I've got packages arriving from home today. Could you take care of them when they come home? No problem. Thanks so much. You're a lifesaver. Hey, I'm still talking to you. <gasps> I know you're hungry, so eat something already. It's delicious. Glad to hear that. Another one, please. Fine. Make sure you chew properly. Good morning, Rumi. Good morning, Anga. Don't talk with food in your mouth. That's rude. Ow, you hit me. This is abuse. I'm taking this to the Board of Education. Don't be ridiculous. I'm disciplining you. You two really get along, don't you? I guess. We are related, after all. You're Anna Fujimoto, right? Your first year in the basketball team? Yes, and? I did introduce myself, right? You stop being so impersonal with me? Everyone else calls me by my name. No, thank you. I see. Wow, she really hates you. <laughs> what a riot. No, it's not. Stop laughing. Enough with the teasing. <laughs> this is what we call the cold shoulder. I'm off to class. Have a great day, Rumi. KK, see you at practice. What about me? Goodbye. Woo! Hit you with another cold shoulder. Ow, you hit me again! Shut up! You calling this discipline too? No, I was just annoyed at you. That aside, why does she hate me so much? Oh, come on. It was totally your fault from the start. Huh? Remember what you said out of nowhere? A week ago, while I was on summer break from college, Rumi's dad, i.e. my uncle, asked me to manage a high school girl's dorm. Hey, you're not busy now, right? The next guy won't come till fall, so I really need someone. Think of it as like a short-term job. I don't know. Aren't I too young for something like this? <laughs> Oh, please. I know you're not the time to hit on high schoolers. That's not the point. I don't think I'm the guy for this. You can make money. You'll live in the dorm and meals and utilities will be covered. Uh, say that again? Interested now? If you're just gonna waste time, wanna make a little cash? 
Rumi will be happy to see you too. After all, you haven't seen each other for a long time. I ultimately took my uncle's offer to become the girl's door manager for the time being. So, my name's Ryota Hayamizu. I won't be here for very long, but I'll be around to help everyone with their practices and club activities. Let's have a good time! Question! Do you have a girlfriend? If not, then I'll be... Oh, and by the way, I'm that annoying Pipsqueak's cousin. Whoa, did you just call me an annoying Pipsqueak? Yes, I'm talking about you, Rumi. And you, the girl next to her. Wh which team are you on? Who? Me? Yes. I'm on the basketball team. Why? Oh, I see. I was thinking that it must be great being big. What? I was just saying what was on my mind. But everyone burst into laughter. Anna's face turned bright red and she ran out of the room. Rumi really gave me an earful after that, but I still don't know what was wrong with what I said. You should never, ever tell a girl any part of her is big. I was only commenting on her height. Oh, and so what? Sure, she's the tallest on the team. Wait, that's even worse! You're awful! Now you're just projecting your own security, shorty. I'm gonna be late if I keep talking to you. See ya! Have a good day! <laughs> what about a goodbye kiss? As if. Get out of here already! Ooh, you're no fun. I saw off my wild child of a cousin and took my time finishing my breakfast. By the end, I'd already forgotten how cold Anna had been towards me. Oh, Anna! It's good to train on your own, but don't overdo it, okay? <laughs> Listen to me, will ya? I responded, didn't I? <laughs> Not very endearing, are you? Oh, really? But I seem to be well-liked by most people other than you. Because basketball is a team sport, right? It's all good if you're not like this to your teammates. Oh, have this. Make sure you stay hydrated. Huh? No, thank you. Uh, here they are, prickly one. An animal's roar suddenly echoed through the night. And Anna's expression stiffened. Ow, ow. Ah! <gasps> You're a dog! Ah, oh, look at it. It's so cute. No, it's not cute at all. Dogs are scary. Yeah, stay away. So save me. Huh, so you're scared of dogs. <sighs> well, obviously. Help me already. That's not a good way of asking for help. Uh, please help me. All right, fine. Hey, stay. <laughs> the dog's owner came just as I calmed it down. Meanwhile, Anna remained wary of the dog and kept her distance. I'm so sorry. He got away from me so suddenly. Don't worry, it's okay. It's not okay at all. They've left. You can come back now. Really? Oh! What's wrong? I think I hurt my leg. Oh, really? Let me help you. When I held out my hand, she looked extremely displeased. Why are you helping me anyway? Obviously, it's because it looks like you sprained your ankle. I can walk on my own. I can't let you do that. I'm fine. Listen up. I said that training on your own is important, right? But when you can't play because you injured yourself, you're gonna regret it for a long time, just like me. Wait, do you mean... What, Rumi didn't tell you? I used to play for my basketball team in high school. But I got hurt during the final game and got taken off the court. I was a pretty well-known player at the time, you know? What did you injure? My knee. Notice how I'm walking a little funny? I'd much rather carry you on my back, but... Lending my shoulder is the best I can do. Sorry. I should be the one saying sorry. What's this about? I was so sure you were just some shallow, tactless guy who was rude to girls as adorable as Rumi. No, you've pretty much nailed me on the head. There really was nothing false about what she said. Basketball was everything to 18-year-old me. Take that away and I had nothing left. My uncle was concerned, so he offered me this job since I had spent the following years as a bundle of apathy. <laughs> You're pretty funny, Ryuta. Whoa! What? I finally get to see you smile. It's pretty cute. Please don't tease me like that. After all, I'm a big and endearing girl. Still holding a grudge against me for that? No, I'm not. You totally are. I can see the dorm now. I can make it back to my room from here. Thank you for your help. Make sure to take it easy. I will. Good night. 
After tonight, my relation with Anna changed just a little bit. I wouldn't say we were particularly good terms yet, but she's less cold to me, and she greets me in the morning. Things continued like this as I spent my summer at the girls' dorm, and they decided to hold a little party for me three weeks after I started working there. A party on my birthday, in fact. Happy 20th, Ryuta! Happy birthday! We got presents for you! There's one for me too! Here you are! Thanks, girls! I really appreciate it! <laughs> my oh my! Someone is a ladies' man! And thank you too, Rumi! For what? This was your idea, right? After all, there shouldn't be anyone else who knows when my birthday is other than Rumi. I guess that much was obvious, huh? You'd be correct. This is all according to my plan. You sound like some kind of villain. I'm trying to sound less embarrassed. You could be cuter about that. Anyway, it wasn't all me to pick out presents, decorate the room, and make the cake. Everyone's grateful that you're here. I really haven't done that much, though. You could be cuter about that, you know? Right back at me, huh? Hey, want to have some cake before you go out to practice? Oh, Rumi, what's going on today? We're having cake for Ryuta's birthday. It's Ryuta's birthday? Yeah. Wait, when did you start calling him by name? Hey, Anna, have some cake. Rumi's really proud of it. Excuse me, I'm handing you an invoice later, you know. Seriously? For everything? Of course. Dad told you you're getting paid for this, right? Ryuta, is today your birthday? Yeah, didn't Ruby tell you? But you two don't get along, right? Did something change? I don't have anything for you. Yeah, don't worry about it. I'm apparently paying for the cake, and it seems like my cousin here didn't really help with anything. I've got a hug and a kiss for you! No, thanks. Oh, come on! Um, I'll pass on the cake. Thank you, though. You sure? Happy birthday, Ryuta. Th thanks. Well, I've got extra practice to do. Don't stay out too late. I know. <sighs> Does something seem different about her? You think? Seems as reserved as usual to me. Hmm. On a different note, there won't be any more of your beloved chocolate cake at this rate. Oh, no. More interested in food than in girls, huh? You're a lost cause, for sure. I practice my shots again and again. When my body's in motion, I can forget all kinds of things. But something was off with me today. I couldn't score from my best position. I kept missing my shots. More than that, thoughts of earlier things other than basketball crept into my mind. I turned around at the sound of footsteps. Hey, someone's working hard. Ryuta, what are you doing here? I thought I'd bring you something to drink. Got time for a quick break? Oh, thank you. How do you feel? You've got a practice match this weekend, right? I feel fine. You're a bad liar. Haven't you been missing your shots? You saw me? That's so mean of you. So what's on your mind? What do you mean? You just seem to be off your game, so I wondered if something had happened. It's nothing, really. I just... Just what? I kind of wish I would gotten you some kind of present. I had no idea at all, and that's a little frustrating. I told you. You don't have to worry about that. This has nothing to do making you not feel bad. I just want to give you something. In that case, I wonder if there's something you can do for me. Huh? You said you wanted to give me something, right? Yes. Can I ask for anything? Well, as long as it's appropriate, you know? <laughs> I can never ask for anything weird. Weird, huh? <laughs> Looks like Rumi's rubbing off on you. Back on topic. Promise me you'll win your practice match. Why that? Remember what I said about how I got injured in my final match? You're about to play against the same school I was against. I was my team's ace, and we lost after I got sidelined. I want to get back at him, in a sense. Can you do that? I promise we'll win. Thanks, Anna. If you can do that, I think I'll be able to graduate high school without any regrets. Didn't you already graduate, though? Figuratively speaking, do your best before I leave the dorm. Oh, right. You'll be gone at the end of summer. Yep, I'll be headed back to college. Can we make a pinky promise? That's kind of embarrassing. Don't worry about it. Come here. Fine. Pinky promise. Pinky promise. I better not lie. 
We made our promise under the summer triangle, twinkling brightly in the night sky. A basketball team's practice match was held at the end of the summer. Ryuta, watch my plays! Look at the other team, not at me! Okay. Rumi fully got into basketball mode and put her game face on. Anna was raring to play from the very start. He could sense in the air that it would be a good game from their postures. As soon as a whistle blew, the game swung back and forth. Every point we scored, the other team scored right back. Anna! What? I'm on a roll today. Keep passing the ball to me. All right! First, eyes were on Rumi after a three-point shot. She used to copy me all the time as a child, and she never got any better. But now I could sense she's become an important pillar of her team. All of her practice is paying off. But she was able to make as many shots as she has thanks for her teammates' support. Sorry I missed that one. It's okay, we've got your back. The other team were pulled into their groove. The ball was passed around, and any missed shots were taken back on the rebound. And there was no one who jumped higher or reached further than Anna Fujimoto. Rumi, let's try again. Thanks! The ball drew beautiful arcs across the gym again and again as her team worked to get the ball to Rumi. Now we're down to the final moments. Rumi's ball fell straight through the net, without even touching the ring as a buzzer rang. And the match was over. Rumi's fist shot up into the air triumphantly. She shot an amazing buzzer beater. Needless to say, our team won that match. Ryuta, did you see that? It was a great shot. Congratulations! We won! Anna, congrats to you too. She only waved her hand slightly in response. Maybe she was feeling shy. Or she was being reserved, as Rumi says. But I quickly realized it was neither of those things. Ryuta, I thought you had left with everyone else. They've already left. I'll stay back to wait for you. Why? So they wouldn't worry about you? Same reason why I let them go back first. Did you catch on? When did you sprain it? Towards the end of match. Just like that one night, Hannah sprained her ankle during the match. She tried to endure the pain, but when she walked off the court, I realized she was making the same expression she made that night. Rumi, the team captain, also noticed Anna was acting strange, so when I told Rumi to bring Anna home, Rumi smiled gratefully and left things to me. Come here. I can walk on my own. No, don't be so stubborn. You want me to lecture you again? You're such a worry ward. I'm sorry. About what? For making you promise to win. That's why you tried so hard, right? I want to say that wasn't the reason, but it probably was a small part of it. Just a small part? Yes. Even if that's the case, I still feel responsible. I'm sorry. It's okay. Well, thank you. It was nothing. I was just doing what I wanted. But if you're really feeling responsible, then apologize. Didn't I just do that? For tactlessly calling me big. I'm still self-conscious about that, you know? Oh, about that. I wasn't actually referring to your height. What? Then... Ew, you pervert! Not that either. Hey, don't hit me! You could fall! Sorry. Then what were you referring to? Your hands. Mine aren't that large, so I had a hard time receiving the ball. I was jealous of how large your hands are because they could always catch the ball. Now that you mention it, I can catch all kinds of balls. Right? You put a lot of weight in today's match, too. Hmm. Even so, I'm not happy to hear that. Having big hands isn't very cute. Really? Well, I guess I wouldn't be a good judge of what's cute or not. Still, I admire how you reach out during matches for your team. Nothing is attractive. What do you mean by that? I mean that you look really cool. That isn't praise at all. It isn't? I should have figured. You haven't changed at all. I guess summer's over now. And you'll be leaving soon, too. Yeah. It's been a while since I've had such a fun summer. Hey, Ryuta, hold your hand out. Huh? Why? Just do it. I'm taking my reward for winning the match. Okay, fine. Like this? Perfect! Wow, your hands really are small. Oh, hush. <laughs> I've got your hand. Huh? Maybe it's not so bad having big hands. I can catch anything in them. From my teammates' missed shots to an older guy. How long are you going to do this for? Just a little longer. Oh, fine. My hand held in her larger one. 
I smiled next to Anna. What's up? It's nothing. There was nothing to the contrary in her smile. No trace of the cold shoulder she used to give me.